So today's recipe, I am making a recipe from the Cheesecake Factory called Chicken Bellagio. Now they serve it up with some pasta. They got some nice chicken breast that has just been oh, nice and crispy on the outside with a little breading. And they serve it, like I said, on top of the pasta with a Parmesan cream sauce then a little bit of prosciutto and some arugula that has been dressed with a little bit of olive oil and lemon juice, nice and fresh and crisp. I tell you, it's delicious. I'm gonna make my own version of this. I'm gonna be using zucchini zoodles instead of pasta because I wanna keep this more low carb. And I'm just changing up some of the ingredients. I'm using olive oil instead of canola oil. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna love this, guys. It is really delicious, not difficult to make at all, very simple and you're gonna love it. I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after my chef joke. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna start off with chef joke number one, and I'm really not sure how many jokes I'm gonna put in today, just keep you guys in suspense, but there'll be at least two anyway. All right, so here we go. How do chickens bake a cake? I did that to the left. Did you notice those of you who watch my videos? The answer is they start from scratch. So we're going to start off with our cream sauce and in that cream sauce is garlic, plenty of garlic. So I've got about four cloves here depending on the size of your cloves. I like garlic so I err on the side of more rather than less. And you want to put it through a garlic press like this so it comes out nice and small and it saves you time and it makes the job easy. We're also going to need some heavy whipping cream, about a half a cup, some chicken stock, and remember you can get the written recipe down below in the description. We're also going to be using some Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour that's gluten-free, and what this is going to do is thicken up our sauce. Then use a whisk to mix it up. Now to give it that great Parmesan cheese flavor, we're going to be using some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Because this cheese is so light and fluffy when we grate it, go ahead and just mound it into your measuring cup. I have a lot of rosemary growing in my yard, so I'm gathering some here. We're going to put about a teaspoon in. Uh, first you want to just peel off the petals, chop it up nice and fine, and then measure out about a teaspoonful. Now I make my own homemade Italian seasoning mix and I'll leave a link for you down in the description so you can make it or you can use store-bought. So we're going to add a teaspoon of this to our mix. To make our cream sauce, I've got a medium frying pan here and I'm going to add about a tablespoon of olive oil. And to that we have some butter here. This is real butter. This is Kerrygold. And we're going to put that in there. Once this melts, we're going to add the garlic. Once you start seeing the butter melted and the bubbles coming up, it's time to add the garlic. You don't want this too hot. You don't want the butter to burn. So I'll add the garlic to this and we're going to cook this for about two minutes. And you just want to work it in. You don't want it too hot. We don't want to burn that garlic. That's for sure. Now I'm going to add the chicken broth. It has the flour in it, which is going to thicken this up. So I want to go ahead and stir this a little bit before I add it to get all that flour mixed back in and settled to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to pour that in. Next is going to go our spices. Toss all those in. Now I'm going to turn the temperature up to medium just to get it to simmer. I want it to cook and thicken up. After a couple minutes, I think you can see here, it's starting to thicken up. So once the sauce is thickened, I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this and then the cream. Once we get that cream incorporated, then we can add the Parmesan cheese. Mix the cheese in with a whisk. And once it's all nice and hot and bubbly, it's pretty much done. Now, if you want to taste it at this point, you can always add a little more, you know, salt if you need it. So now that this is done, I will put a lid on it to keep it nice and warm off the heat until we're ready to serve up our dish. All right, so it must be time for chef joke number two. All right, here we go. 
why is it easy for chicks to talk? Because talk is cheap. And we're gonna start working on our zucchini zoodles. So you want your zucchini, when you go pick it out, pick out the straightest one you can find and the fattest, really. The fat ones just make the most zoodles. Now to prep your zucchini for the zoodle machine, you're gonna wanna cut off both ends nice and straight. Now you're gonna need a zoodle machine, something like what I have here, and I'll leave a link for you down in the description if you wanna purchase one. Now this thing has suction feet so it'll stick to the counter, so make sure you use those. And then we just crank away while pushing in on the zucchini. And then when you're done, just take out the small piece of zucchini and crank out another one. I like to cut through the zucchini just a little bit because some of the strands are so long you couldn't even wind it up on your fork. I'm gonna place the zoodles into a bowl and take them over to the stove and have them ready to cook the same time we cook the chicken. Now we're gonna work on our chicken breast. All right, I've got rosies here and these are thinly sliced. You can use thicker ones and just cut them in half lengthwise. Even though these are fairly thin, I'm still gonna pound them out a bit just so that they're, the thickness is even throughout. Lay a piece of saran wrap over the top. This just helps to make it easier and keeps the mess to a minimum while you're pounding it out. We're gonna salt and pepper these, but only on one side because they're as thin as they are. And then pat in the salt and pepper a little bit so it sticks. Next, we're gonna need an egg, so just crack it in the bowl and use a fork and just whip it up. On another plate, add some flour. Now I'm using Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour, so this is gluten-free, but you can use regular flour if you would rather. In another dish, we're gonna use Aaliyah's Original Real Panko Crumbs. And to this, we're gonna add some Italian seasoning because there's no seasoning in the panko crumbs at all. Now I have my own uh, Italian seasoning blend, which I'll leave a link to, and you can make that, or you can use store-bought. And you wanna give that a bit of a stir. To bread our chicken breast, first we'll take a breast and dip it into flour and coat it on both sides. You wanna shake off any excess flour here before we put it into the egg. and then flip it over onto the other side. Make sure you coat the whole breast in the egg, not like I did there where I left that corner un untouched, you see that? And then into the panko crumbs we go, and we really wanna coat this well here. And we'll do both sides, of course, and we're gonna press down so that the coating actually sticks. And then I'll flip it over and make sure that the coating is on the second side as well. Then we'll place the breaded chicken onto a clean plate. Once we get all of our chicken breasts coated, we can take it over to the stove and start cooking. Okay, we are ready to start cooking. I wanna show you my setup. I have one frying pan over here. This is for my zucchini. We need to cook that for just three or four minutes. The middle pan here, the large one is for our chicken. We're gonna cook it there. And then back here, I have my cream sauce, my Parmesan cream sauce to go with it, and I'm keeping that warm. We're gonna start with the zoodles. I'm gonna place some olive oil in my pan and get that hot. A tablespoon or so. Place my zoodles in there. I have more than I need just because I like leftovers of these guys because they're so good. Add a little bit of salt to that. And I like to place a little bit of garlic powder. And we'll give that a toss. And like I said, that's gonna cook for, you know, four or five minutes just to take the, the crispy, the crunchy edge off. It's been about four minutes on the zoodles. They are done now. It's just, I'm gonna keep them warm. So to cook our chicken, I have my large frying pan here over medium high heat, and I'm gonna place a fair amount of olive oil in here, pretty much to cover the bottom of the pan lightly. Once that oil is hot and it is shimmering, it's time to put in the chicken breasts. Lay them in from closest to you to away from you. That way, if there's any splatter, it tends to push the oil away from you. This will minimize burns. You don't want to overcook chicken breast, so be very careful. I have my instant read thermometer right here, and we're gonna use this 
I'm going to take it out at about 160 to 165. I don't want to overcook it and dry it out, but I don't want to undercook it either. All right, we're going to turn over our chicken breast here gently. Look at that, a beautiful golden brown. We just have to make sure that it's cooked properly. So we'll let that go for another, I don't know, three or four minutes or so, and we'll check, I'll check the temperature. All right, I'm gonna check the temperature on this. Boy, that's nice and crispy. And then we're at, uh, ooh, we're there, we're done. Yep, so the last thing we need to do is take a little fresh arugula. This is organic. Place it in the dish, in a bowl here. We're gonna treat this very lightly, just gonna put in a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna squeeze some fresh lemon juice into the bowl. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. So just give that a nice light toss just to coat all the leaves, and then we'll be ready to plate this up. All right, you gotta see how incredible this is when we plate it up. All right, we'll start with our zucchini noodles, zoodles. I like to put a good amount of noodles on here. Now we're gonna place some of that fantastic sauce. Give it a little stir. You're gonna love this sauce. The sauce is what makes this. So you wanna place a little bit of this sauce on the zoodles, but not too much. Just dot it around like that so you get some a little bit everywhere, okay? Next comes our piece of chicken. I like to just lay the whole thing on there. Look at that beautiful golden brown. It's crispy, I can feel it. Now we're gonna go back with some more sauce. Now we're gonna add some prosciutto. That's an Italian ham that is super thin. Look at how thin this is. And we're just gonna kind of crinkle it up and I'm gonna place it right here on top of the chicken. This adds a nice little kind of salty element to this. It's and then that little arugula salad with that little bit of lemon and olive oil toss right on top. This thing is just incredible. Every time I look at this, I just want to eat it. All right, you made it to the last joke. Good for you. All right, why did the chicken stand in the middle of the road? Because he wanted to play squash. <laughs> if you like chicken over zoodles, you're gonna to wanna to try my creamy coconut lemon chicken over zoodles in this recipe right here. It is phenomenal. It's really worth trying. If you enjoyed today's video, smash the like button for me to let me know and leave me a comment. And if you'd like to share it, maybe you know somebody who likes to go to the Cheesecake Factory, now they can make it at home and make it healthier. Thanks for watching and we'll see you back here next week for another rockin' recipe.